if you guys are sensitive to certain topics, this may be a hard one for some of you. And the majority of people that I know that, you know, a disability is just a part of them. You know, it's not, it doesn't make them who they are. It's just a part of what makes them them, right? You can't help with what you're born with. You can't help with how you were created and then show this world. Now, there are a lot of conspiracy theorists, unfortunately, that believe that uh, certain vaccines will give you autism, certain vaccines will give you uh, uh, certain developmental disabilities, but um, it's, a lot of the times it's just the reality is they can't accept. You know, it's, it's hard enough. I think it's just bad enough when a lot of people in the, dis in the disabled community can't accept themselves and then they buy into the whole uh, you know, medical model of our society where we're nothing, we're not supposed to be anything, we're not supposed to make anything of, himself, of ourselves, we're worthless, so on and so forth, right? And the reason we buy into this model is because from the time we're young, we're told that we can be cured. We're told that, um, you know, we, we're basically pathetic and can't do anything for ourselves. Um, so that's why I use the term normal, because those of you who aren't disabled, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you guys, except, you know, the majority is laziness, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with you guys, and it's you who can't deal with, you know, whatever's ahead of you. So for me, um, a lot of, I feel like a lot of people that are normal will never understand what it's like to lose a sense, to have a, a limitation, a restriction, so on and so forth. So I feel like a lot of people just get this warped sense of reality when it comes to being disabled, to put hate out there and wanting to... I mean, I see a lot of bashing, uh, especially when it comes to individuals that are in a wheelchair, individuals that require a wheelchair, like myself. Um, I just think it's weird that the community is being attacked relentlessly uh, lately, especially like within the last year or so, um, especially when with people diving into the whole conspiracy theories and diving into the, to a lot of the agendas that are put out there, uh, mainly by the media, um, mainly by the higher ups. And I just think it's interesting, um, that a lot of words are, be, are being thrown around. Um, and the most, and what I'm seeing is reactions, you know, that's just basically what I'm seeing is people just reacting to what they were called or what they're being attacked for so on and so forth um but i just think it's weird that me or someone like myself using a wheelchair affects you that badly like if you're normal you don't you are able to walk you're able to drive you're able to do the majority of things i'm not able to do you know you you know but it affects you so badly that you have to attack an entire community. Like, to me, it's odd. You know, there's there's a lot of... It's not just, you know, disabled community, but that's going to be the, the purpose of this video. But um, I just think it's weird that there are a lot of individuals that are losing their minds and want to add hate to the list of things that they do every day, you know what I mean? Like just, just to be hateful, just to be negative, just to be uh, derogatory towards a lot of individuals. And then, you know, you, you create uh, a cult-like agenda and you have a lot of people in hysteria and you have a lot of people in, um, you know, that it basically in the same mindset you are, that could be potentially dangerous towards individuals like myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, the sad thing is, is that a lot of people don't realize 
the the things that they put out there. Yes, there's there's a lot of you know, like it, it, it could be anything. It could be the, the things, the programs that you watch, the music that you listen to, um, the YouTubers that you follow. Like, basically, your words have power. So your tongue has the most power out of anything. And whatever you put out there, you're going to get it back. Um, it doesn't matter what you believe in. And I think people forget that they want to call out, you know, the higher ups, they want to call out the government, they want to call out the agendas that are put out there. But at the same time, you're doing the exact same, you're like, you're no better because you're doing the exact same thing, if not worse, because if you're supposedly awake and supposedly enlightened, why are you putting out exactly what they're doing? But you're, it's, to me, it's worse because if you're supposedly no better and you know everything and you are ahead of the game supposedly, why are you doing exactly what they're doing? And you see what I'm saying? It's like to me, it's just like a a bit of martyrism and it's a bit of you know um, there's a lot of obs- obsession going on. I, I see that as well. Um, but I I just wanted to make it clear that you know a lot of people just need to watch what they say as far as like following individuals that are uh heavy in the conspiracy theories and and heavy into um trying to uh prepare for what's ahead as far as the um agendas go and and that's all i'm gonna say as far as that because i i can't really say too much because it's youtube but um, that's pretty much what I wanted to say as far as that, you know, part of YouTube goes and, and that part of content creating, because it's not just YouTube, I mean, it's all over these platforms, it's BitChute, it's Rumble, it's, you know, it's just all of these platforms that they're not allowed to say anything. Um, so with that being said, also, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of judgment going around as well as far as individuals who are chronically ill who are um you know terminal illness fatal illness and if you don't know the difference between the two between a terminal illness and a fatal illness terminal illness means that you have a disease or illness that eventually will kill you eventually you know your your body is just unable to sustain for a certain period of time um and doctors can predict but they can't really um a lot of uh, doctors have a god complex unfortunately and they think that they can predict it but some are accurate and some um some have to uh, rely on god unfortunately and that goes against the uh medical oath that they have to take uh, when becoming a doctor that you're not supposed to rely on God, you're supposed to rely on science. So there's a, that whole uh, theory and debate um, amongst those that are in the medical field. But um, if you have a fatal illness, then that means that uh, you truly do not have a timeline. And you uh, aren't able to be given a timeline because you have surpassed what you were showing as far as symptoms go and and uh, the rarity of your illness as well as um, the severity of your illness. Like myself, I have um, vascular ehlers Janlos, but I also have coffin McHugh-Sick syndrome, which is the one of the rarest uh, illnesses out there. And there's not a lot of um, not a lot of individuals that have what I have. And then, you know, you have two illnesses battling it out as far as the Coffin McCusick and then Ellers Janlos kind of going head to head. And then you have, you know, me losing my vision and hearing, that doing the same thing. So it's throughout my entire body as far as the Ellers Janlos goes, not just, you know, one particular area. So for me, if I overdo it as far as like physical strenuing, activities um but you know if if i overdo it like let's say i do let's say i clean the house the entire house for like i'd say four hours out of the day okay so let's let's say i do cleaning for four hours the, the entire house i get it all done 
and I don't take a break. Um, I am at a higher risk for a heart failure, heart attack, stroke, um, eruption. You know, that's just that comes with the territory of having vascular Ehlers-Danlos. In my case, um, I can't speak for anybody else that has vascular Ehlers-Danlos. I'm just speaking for myself, just so you guys have an idea of what uh, a fatal illness pertains to. And I, I see that a lot of um, people are upset about this, um, especially as of lately. So the first person that I'm going to bring up here is... Um, the actor who played, uh, Pink Panther, who was, um, I want to say, uh, Bosman, can't remember his first name, but the picture is right there, and everybody was, uh, clowning him right before he passed, and they were saying that he was, you know, was, uh, you know, in, 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 individual who was anorexic, individual who uh, was too thin, or he looked like an idiot, or he must be, uh, I'm not going to use the F slur, but uh, obviously he was gay if, you know, why do you need to be that thin and uh, have an eating disorder or so on and so forth. They were basically clowning him, right? Because, you know, God forbid people put two and two together and an individual is sick. And a lot of uh, YouTubers were calling it out and saying, okay, let's let's pray for him because we don't really know what he's going through. Um, a lot of you guys are clowning him. A lot of you guys are making fun of him. But what if he's actually going through something? But because our society is so polarized, no one's compassionate anymore. So the majority is going to, you know, go on the bandwagon of talking shit, making fun, so on and so forth, right? And the sad part is, is that a lot of the people that were clowning him, even though he, you know, he passed away, like, not even two weeks later, um, because he did, event he did end up having cancer. Um, a lot of people were just like, I mean, at the end of the day, people don't give a shit. I mean, these are actors, unless you know the person uh, yourself, that's the only way you're really going to care, right? So, for a lot of people, they just, you know, they just go on the bandwagon. And then there's um, the individual here who uh, worked for um, Louis Vuitton. Um, he actually worked for Kanye West, and a lot of people are saying that this is a sacrifice of Kanye West, unfortunately. There's a, like, there's a lot of talk going around. And a, a lot of people were saying that uh, Kanye West was jealous of him because he did get a, an opportunity to work outside of creating Yeezy, creating his brand, and, and designing all of you know the, the designer stuff as far as Kanye West goes. And a lot of people forget as well is that um, you, uh, you may, you know, want to work for someone you've known for a while, but then you want to, you know, expand and, and do what you want to do. But a lot of say, people were saying that it was jealousy. A lot of people were saying that, you know, he was pissed off, um, which I find it odd that he was jealous of Virgil because how would you be jealous of someone when you it's like to, to, for me he had already opened the door so he had already had the approval of um, Anna Wintour's who is the hardest person to impress apparently um, and even uh, she wasn't too fond of Kim Kardashian like she literally Kim Kardashian had to more than likely get on her knees and beg in order to, you know, like her. I mean, let's, let's be real here. Um, but if it wasn't for Kanye, uh, Kim Kardashian wouldn't have the, the opportunities that she has nowadays when a lot of, a lot of women are going to hate that comments, but I'm just being real here. Um, without Kanye, Kim wouldn't be where she's at right now. Um, but 
I think a lot of people forget as well is that, you know, like, like to me, it doesn't make any sense if, you know, Kanye actually was jealous of his friend who basically helped him out when it comes to um, designing his brand, basically, right? And I think that it's weird that, um, a lot of people were like again they were clowning him and and he looked pretty thin as well he looked pretty real and i think it's it's pretty sad when people make judgments uh when it comes to your weight when it comes to your appearance when you're sick you can't help how your body's going to react to the stress levels that it's going through depending on the illness. It, it really just depends on, you know, the type of cancer you have or the type of uh, terminal illness that you're dealing with as to how your body is going to deal and react to all of the stress, possibly the treatments that you're dealing with. Um, it really just depends, you know, everyone's different and everyone's body is going to react differently. So that's where a lot of people are coming from, you know. And I think that a lot of people need to remember as well is that um, we need to be mindful of other people. But a lot of people just are really ignorant and don't really give a shit and, and, you know, have their own lives, so to speak. And even if you know a person who's sick, it's like people still don't have compassion and, and they want you to do things the way they would do it. But it's like, I'd like to see, I'd like to see you try. You know what I mean? Like, that's just kind of have to, where I have to tell people and check people myself that, you know, want to say that, you know, you should do this, this, and this. But it's like, unless you're in my body and I want to see you try to deal with everything that I deal with and then come back and cry to me. Okay. So that's just kind of where I'm at. And I think that. Um, this other individual, um, okay, so she was a part of, I believe it's called Basketball Wives, and she was also, um, uh, on The Real World, and I think that it's interesting that, um, she's, uh, attacking everybody who's worried about her, because a lot of people are worried about, um, they're, they just don't want a repeat of what's been going on because, you know, you, you had Kanye's friend, you had um, the guy who played Pink Panther, and, you know, people just felt really, pretty stupid for being ignorant, right? So I'm, I'm, my, my guess is they're, they're jumping ahead, right? And they're, they're trying to be supportive and, and not... Um, bash her in a sense and then she came back with I have diabetes um I'm not dying um I have diabetes I have um an eating disorder so she did say that she had anorexia and she was in the limelight because she did tell her husband that he could that, that they could basically separate um they would still be married but they could separate just so he could have his kid right so because she's a lot older than him, and he can sleep with another girl, possibly fall in love with another girl, because that's going to happen, you know, there's going to be that bond, you know, I'm pretty sure that a lot of men who have, um, you know, that have baby mothers that, you know, they, they fall in love with, even though they're not, they're no longer with, they're always going to have some type of feeling towards them because they gave them a child um and even though a lot of you know men and women nowadays want to preach that they're more towards modern love and they're not into monogamy at the end of the day you're gonna have that type of bond if you're gonna have that type of bond with someone that you created a life you're you know what i mean like it's gonna it's gonna happen that you're gonna care about that person so she was a, she got a lot of backlash for or stating that, you know, she was going to allow her husband to basically cheat on her and have a baby with another person. And then she was going to help raise the kid, um, supposedly. And I say supposedly because unless you're actually in that situation, you don't really know what you're going to do. You, you don't really, you can't really 
you can't really say what you're gonna do until it happens. Do you see what I'm saying? So, I think that she herself was jumping the gun. But a lot of um, bloggers were saying that um, it, if you're telling someone that they can leave you and, and go cheat and go uh, be with somebody else, then that's they are dying that that there's something there's something wrong that there's something there that you're allowing the love of your life to go cheat on you to go have another kid to go basically have another life are, are you dying like is there something wrong with you that you're not fully telling because it just doesn't add up so i get people's concern i get people's reaction because they don't want to they don't want to repeat of what they did last time when it comes to when it came to these other uh public figures right and i get it but also i i understand people's standpoint when it comes to uh, quote unquote suffering in silence um and the, I, i've i've heard that term a lot lately where people are saying that they don't understand someone who would want to f be alone in their fight, whether it's cancer, whether it's a terminal illness, whether it's a fatal illness. They don't understand. Like, why wouldn't why wouldn't you want support? Why wouldn't you want uh, people around you, right? So let's let's discuss that, right? So. A lot of people who, um, I, I, I can understand from their standpoint, you know, if, if you're an individual who would prefer to deal with everything on your own. Um, I've known a lot of people who uh, dated or married an individual who was sick and they didn't know it because that person who was sick just wanted to live their life to the fullest or live their life the way they wanted to before they had to leave, right? They, they had to go home or uh, leave this earth, uh, however you want to place that, however you, however you, whatever your beliefs are in the afterlife. Um, and I, I've had so many people that, you know, individuals who were married or did spend a significant amount of their time with an individual who was sick and they also came to me and said why would they why would anybody hide this like why wh why would they hurt me in this way and I the best response I could give these individuals um, was that when you're sick and when you have a certain amount of time or you're given you know, you're you're given uh, a prescription by doctors, basically saying that you know you you we don't we, you know we can't give you an exact day. <laughs> we can't give you a month, a year, six months from now, six years. We can't give you an exact day, but what we can do is tell you to live your life the way you want. Do the things you've always wanted to do. Make yourself happy. Do this for you, right? And a lot of people forget that. Um, you know, the, it, it is specifically your time to be selfish. Um, and maybe those individuals that, that felt they didn't want to say anything to their loved ones was because they knew it was going to hurt. They knew it would be painful. Like, I've even told my husband, um plenty of times when things got hard and, and it got rough for him to watch me get like really be sick and there are some days where I'm bedridden there are some days where I'm just not able to even get out of bed um, and there are days where he has to help me sometimes or make dinner for the both of us or just be more attentive towards my needs that day and I, I can understand from that standpoint where they just feel like they don't want to be a burden. They just feel like they don't want to add to the pain of others. Because people do make it about themselves. People forget to think outside themselves, especially towards the individual who's the one that's going through it, right? 
Um, and it happens, you know. It, it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a shitty person. It's just inevitable, right? And for a lot of people, too, is that maybe they spent their whole lives pleasing others. Maybe they spent their whole lives being selfless. And this was their one chance to be selfish and, and do things for themselves and make themselves happy rather than worrying about what the other person's going to think or, or what someone that they care about is going to, you know, throw at them. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like a, a lot of people don't understand from the standpoint of, of being, you know, uh, especially with cancer. Cancer is a pretty, that's a pretty uphill battle. And, um, a lot of people have their their say in it you know a lot of people say well i would be doing it this way or i would i would refuse treatment or i would uh try a holistic approach or uh, i would make it about me do you see what i'm saying like i i remember when um a family member of mine was um had sec uh, cancer for the second time and and um their uh their you know life partner was just just made everything about them you know the the individuals clearly stated that they didn't want chemo they didn't want radiation but that individual made everything about them and at, at you know at the end of the day you have to accept what fate has for you and a lot of the times people can't you know, it is really hard to lose someone that you really care about. That is something that not a lot of people talk about. But it's interesting because we don't talk about it, but we joke about it. We don't talk about it, but it's thrown in our faces. You know what I'm saying? We have the media and public figures and celebrities and, and the higher-ups afraid of death. So afraid of death that they make the mass majority afraid of it too they're afraid of their consequences at the end of the day they're afraid of their consequences when they die even though they claim that they don't believe in anything clearly they believe in something because why else would you be afraid you know what i'm saying but um i remember doing a a, a poll uh, several times in the last of three years i did several polls all over social media and my biggest question was, are you afraid of death? And if you are, what exactly are you afraid of? And a lot of people are afraid of the unknown. And a lot of people are afraid to leave. They're not afraid of death specifically, but they're afraid to leave their loved ones behind. That's basically what they're afraid of. And I think that a, a, the majority of people that are afraid are people that are religious, which I think is a little odd because if you believe in God and and you pray to God every day, um, you know whether it's Satan or uh, you know the heavenly God, um, what are you exactly afraid of? You know what I'm saying like I just always thought that that was weird. Um, but that's just me. <laughs> and I think that a lot of people also need to remember that they just need to um, put themselves in the other person's shoes rather than, you know, make it about them. But I wanted to use those three examples as far as um, celebrities because I, I, I feel like that's a big topic right now as far as not assuming, not judging, and, and, and trying to be supportive. But can you really be supportive of someone you don't really know? I don't know. Um, I know that I, I've gotten a lot of support over the years as far as the brand goes. I know that. But I've noticed that over time, when I try to connect with people that I've never met before, and try to use the the same approach that I did when I was doing the brand for so many years is that a lot of people misplace your kindness with an agenda and they think that you're up to something when it's really just 
being genuine. Um, so I still deal with that, even though I haven't, you know, been doing the brand for over a year now. But, you know, it's not going to stop me from being a kind person. It's not going to stop me from trying to help other people in any way that I can. You know what I'm saying? So, I know that a lot of people um, are going to notice that I have a wig on. And, you know, before I close out this video, I want to give you guys a understanding of what I deal with on a daily basis. So, um, for the last year, I've been getting a lot of more concerns than criticism, but also like just ignorant remarks. And I think it's sad when women in particular um, make everything about weight and appearance. When every day I don't know what's coming. You know, every day it's different as far as the pain levels go. Every day is different as far as me trying to just deal with everything and, and have the approach that I have as far as creating content or posting on social media and doing things differently as far as trying to reach out to people and trying to do what I have to do as far as, you know, making things better and easier for myself. Um, and a lot of people forget too is that when you're a content creator uh, or you're considered an influencer, um, I'm still trying to grasp that um, label or that that category, as I guess you could say, that I'm under. Um, I thought you had to have like a, a certain criteria in order to be an influencer, but apparently I fall into that category. Um, and I think that a lot of people just need to remember or, or just try to be mindful of, of what they say to people. You know what I'm saying? I remember getting into it um, with another uh, content creator and like it wasn't just her, it was like a bunch of other girls too or a bunch of other women I should say. But, um, the immaturity, the ignorance, like, that, I'm used to it. I'm used to people just making snarky remarks and snarky comments and just being condescending. I get it. Um, and it's, a lot of it is, uh, people's own insecurity, people's, um, you know, a lot of what they're going through. And they're just taking it out on you. And... I just think, I just thought it was odd that, you know, like, they would just say, you know, you know, I wish I was as thin as you or I was as beautiful as you, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I'm not trying, like, I'm not doing any, like, they, they wanted to know my routine. I'm like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just actually sick. Like, I can't control what my body does from an hour from now to tomorrow. I, that's not something I plan out. I can't, I can't control that. Um, and when I would make suggestions like, you know, try apple cider vinegar gummies, cause that's supposed to help your weight. Try, uh, gummies that'll help uh, like essentially put nutrients in you. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people just tend to pop pills thinking that that's going to cure them or that's going to make them healthier. It's not. Um, it's just eventually going to destroy your liver. Um, but when I would make all these suggestions, it's like, well, then I'm considered not, I, well, I, I can't really, according to them, I can't really give advice. Well, you're sick anyways, so... If you're sick, why are you giving advice? And it's like, I didn't create this illness. A lot, I get it. A lot of, a lot of illnesses are created. I get it. 
because, you know, if you have diabetes, it's because you, first of all, the majority of individuals, if you have diabetes, it's because you didn't take care of your body. Some people can't help it. Some people are born that way. Some people can really can't help it. Um, and then if you have anything like Crohn's disease or if you have anything like um, anything to do with your lungs, your digestion, and it, you know, it just so happens, the, again, the majority is lifestyle. The majority is things that you've done to yourself. But people don't see it as if you can reverse it then people want to put it as, you know, they're the victim, they need sympathy, they need to uh, be babied, basically. Whereas individuals like myself, where a lot of these diseases aren't man-made, these are just the cards that I was dealt with, you know. Um, it, it, there's really not that much sympathy. There's more sympathy for people that have cancer. There's more sympathy for people that have illnesses that are out of your control right mainly my shit it's, it's basically all the diseases that i have you know if it wasn't for my parents getting together i wouldn't have had all of these things but at the same time you can't expect me to regret being alive you can't expect me to be angry at god you can't expect me to to hate my life I think that that's where a lot of people come from. They want me to, they basically want me to be angry. And for what? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's despite everything that I'm dealing with, and despite, you know, not knowing what's going to happen from one day to the next, I lived a pretty, pretty good life. You know, I've met celebrities, I've, I've done a lot of bold things that I've wanted to do. Um, I've traveled outside of the country. I, you know, have met a lot of people. I have fallen in love with a lot of people. Like, I've had a pretty, pretty good life. Cons considering everything that I've gone through, considering, you know, where I came up and considering all the trauma and all the abuse and all the chaos and all the neglect that basically was my childhood it's had it pretty good considering you know um but i just think it's it's sad that you know people well mainly women because i don't get this from men like a lot of men that approach me they're not like a lot of them aren't disrespectful. Some of them are, because some of them think that, you know, we're objects and like just women in general, that we're just objects and we're desperate and we'll do anything for their attention or whatever. But the majority of men don't give me shit. They don't give me grief compared to a lot of women. Um, and I think that's why the majority of, of my my demographic when it comes to my YouTube channel is males because, you know, I just, I'm anti-feminism. I don't, um, I don't buy into a lot of the agendas. I don't buy into a lot of what women deal with, right? Um, but at the same time, I try to you know, raise as much awareness as possible. I try to uh, give my honest thoughts about everything. And I, I remember when I first got the wig, and I, cause I, I got the, I got the wig like early last year. And a lot of women were pissed. Like a lot of women were like, "Well, you bought into the whole bullshit of wearing wigs and all of that," but this is synthetic. Like, anything that I buy from here on out as far as, like, wigs go, I don't need, like, 50, 11 of them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that many. A lot of women, you know, are, like, it just becomes, like, an obsession. And then for a lot of women, it comes for, like, a necessity. You know, they just, they like the feeling of having a wig. And, and you know, it's just for a lot of women that are normal and, and don't have any issues with their hair or hair loss you know 
it's more of like an aesthetic, it's like it's just like a pleasing aesthetic thing for them, right? Or it makes them feel good, so on and so forth. It's just different for um, any kind of woman, you know. Um, but if you're sick, um, it's different. And I didn't think I was, for some reason, you know, early on when I started losing my hair and I started, um, I, I just, I tried so many different things and I just needed to come to real, realization over the last four years that I'm, I'm going to lose my hair and it's not my fault, you know. And there's, you know, been a lot of damage as far as like my skin, my hair, my nails, all of that. So eventually over time, I knew that I was going to lose my, my hair. So I, that's why I cut it short and it's as short as the way it is. Um, and I'm not able to dye it as much as I would want to, and I'm not able to bleach it anymore just because my hair just, the, like the hair follicles just simply don't have the strength anymore. They're just, it's not there anymore. Um, I didn't think I was worthy of buying wigs and putting them on. And what I mean by worthy is to me, it's more like for for, for women who have cancer. You know what I mean? It's more for them. It's more... Um, it's, it's really more for them. And... Why I had this mindset? I'm not sure. Maybe it's because of, you know... Again, the... The... the projection of society where people like myself that are fatally ill or terminally ill that don't have cancer... You know, we're, we're not in boxed into that category where, you know, we, we don't deserve half of what they get, you know. Um, and I don't qualify, you know, for like in-home care, according to a lot of what's the criteria are, is that you have to be really, really sick. Like you have to be to the point where you can't take care of yourself, but I'm still able to do that, you know, I'm still able to do things for myself that majority of people that are sick um, would be able to. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'll be there in time. Um, but at least, you know, I know that that's an option later on that, you know, I can have like a nurse come in whenever I'm able to um, have that available or whenever I'm needing it, so on and so forth. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, I just feel like a lot of people just need to be, um, need to be careful when it comes to approaching someone or dealing with someone or just, just on, on social media in general. I see a lot of like people just losing hope. A lot of people just severely depressed, severely anxious still. Um, even though we are in the next phase, so to speak, when it comes to the, to the virus, when it comes to the, you know, agendas being pushed out there. But I just, I just think it's, you know, sad that, you know, there's a lot of people just, you, you can't really talk to individuals. Not, not the way we used to, you know, like you say one little thing or you try to, be supportive towards someone and they're literally just they're ripping your head off and it's all because they're in their own like they're in their own head and a lot of it is not even them being attacked it's just more so that the paranoia that mental illness has really consumed them unfortunately and you can really see the deterioration uh, right before your eyes and I see a lot of that with a lot of people um, throughout all of the social media platforms where the, a lot of people you just can't really talk to anymore. Um, you don't really know what to say or you don't really know what to, um, you, you don't know how they're going to respond. And then you as an individual have to pull back because it's like, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel this, you know, like you have to pull back because it's like, do I stay friends with them or do, do I try to be there for them even though every little 
thing I say or, or if I blink, it's like a, they rip my head off. But at the end of the day, you do have to save your energy. At the end of the day, you do have to do things for you. And if, you know, people aren't there anymore because they've lost their mind or they don't want to get the help that they need or, or whatever the case may be, um, I think people just need to remember that they just need to be selfish and uh, take care of themselves when it comes to, you know, um, dealing with family or friends that, like I just described, that you just, you can't really, it's, it's like a one-way street. You can't really benefit from it. You know what I mean? Um, but I think I'm going to let you guys go. And I uh, just wanted to put this out there and uh, remind individuals that are, you know, that, that are disabled or chronically ill or, you know, terminal illness, so on and so forth. Um, you don't owe anybody an explanation. You don't owe anybody anything. You don't have to apologize for your illness. You don't have to apologize for your disability, regardless of what brought on that circumstance. And I think people need to remember also, especially if you're a uh, part of the disabled community, if you're a part of the terminally ill community, um, people are going to be ignorant. People are going to say stupid things. People are going to um, be ridiculed and condescending of you. But at the end of the day, you have to pull back from that. You have to um, try every, every way, which way you can to not waste your energy in arguing with these people, waste your energy and, um, you know, just it's not worth getting into it with individuals who will never understand, who will never get it, who will never, just, they'll never get it, you know? Unless they're in those shoes, then yeah. But at the same time, you can't make somebody um, understand where you're coming from. It doesn't exist. So, I just need you guys to remember also that you need to live the life that you've always wanted to for you. Just be selfish. And it doesn't mean go out and be a horrible person. It doesn't mean go out and have regrets. That's not what it means. It just means do things for yourself. Do things that, you know, outside of pleasing other people and making other people happy. Make yourself happy. That's all it means. And... If you um, are an individual who is struggling or if you um, find it hard to, you know, just to keep going every day, just find inspiration that you can outside of yourself if you are able to. You know what I mean? So with that being said, I will let you guys go and hope that everyone is doing well. And I hope that you guys, you know, get something out of this, you know, so you don't owe anybody anything, and, you know, you matter, all right, love you guys, bye.